everybody uh tonight we're going to talk about flying almost any place around the planet uh, wanted to look at a bunch of different details <clears throat> uh, some maps and diagrams i'll go through all these really quickly here's like an airport map uh, for the entire planet um, both major airports and we're going to look at smaller airports as well um, and then we're going to look at kind of the visa process um, where <clears throat> it's actually quite difficult to get to and where it might be a little bit easier to get to. Um, and then kind of look at some of the prices um, for some of the flights uh, around the United States. Um, we'll look at basically the Caribbean, look at South America, <clears throat> look at Europe, um, Africa, and then we're also going to look at Southeast Asia. And of course, just kind of get an over idea of what the global flight path looks like. Um, so I wanted to kind of start this way. Um, I've kind of worked on this before a little bit. Um, it's kind of surprising because <clears throat> population doesn't quite equal <clears throat> uh, what's happening with the flight path, as you'll see here. Um, so basically, most of the population is in India right now, as well as in China and Africa. So and then Europe. So basically, we do see quite a number of flights. Um, in Europe, as you can see, and most of the flights actually being in North America right now. So kind of, um, I expect a lot of this to shift basically over to Africa and Latin America, and maybe even Central America, Caribbean, and Southeast Asia in the near future, like next 10, 20 years. Um, we should kind of expect some of these flight paths to look a little bit different, maybe more like this map where we see quite a lot of stuff going on through like Ethiopia, Eastern Africa, uh, kind of being quite busy um, and some areas that we didn't quite see. Um, we do see quite a lot of traffic through Dubai right now. So a lot of this uh, maybe is shifting down towards Ethiopia and even Uganda um, in the future. So uh, that would be in the next 10 years or even uh, further out. So uh, we already see some major hubs like this um, down in Sao Paulo and Rio um, where you see quite a lot of Stuff going on, you'll probably see a lot of that shift over here to West Africa, um, and then maybe even some more connections between um, Africa and uh, South America. So right now we don't really see a whole lot of flights on that path, um, but this actually mostly goes up to Europe. Um, but maybe some of this in the future will probably be redirected and go over to Ghana, Nigeria, and some other places along West Africa that are also very close um, and very affordable. So definitely expect that to change um, for Africa in particular. Um, so let's look at this overall. So if you are trying to fly around the world, um, there's basically kind of a northern route uh, that most people do right now. So that kind of skips South America, Africa, and Australia. Um, so the tickets generally get expensive as you get off of this northern route. So you're talking about cheaper flights if you, going from you know $500 down to a few hundred dollars. Uh, for most of these routes in the northern size and then up to $800 or more um, for a single flight uh, one way and a lot of these places down in South Africa or in South America. So it's just there's not as many flights and there's also just more expensive in general as well. So that's something to consider um, as well when you're considering flying someplace. Um, another thing to think about is basically looking at what's going on <clears throat> in terms of visa process it's not exactly easy you only get typically about 30 days in most countries anyway so you're not talking about a whole lot of time 90 days is also pretty typical as well but you have to apply for that sometimes so you should really only expect about 30 days for most of these countries um for the visa and you do have to file it beforehand in many places like india um, which is a pretty important country on this whole map. Um, so basically, and you can see most of West Africa, you also need to apply for visas in here as well. So something to think about um, when traveling. Um, but South Africa um, and South America is actually pretty open to most Americans at this time. So let's look at the United States first. Um, what happens is there's certain ports that are actually pretty affordable. You get tickets for under a hundred dollars um one way between most of these major cities so if you're in portland san francisco los angeles you're actually in the right spot denver is also pretty good boise and las vegas you can get you know even 33 dollar tickets one way to many of these uh, airports you can kind of see um, some of that depends on frequency 
Um, and then basically on the East Coast, you basically almost everything centers around New York City, Washington, D.C., um, and that area. So you're basically talking pretty cheap flights along the coast here. Uh, and then Chicago kind of being a hidden gem here, as well as Atlanta being pretty good uh, for low-cost flights. Um, and one thing that I would really emphasize is the Caribbean and South America and Central America, right? So right now, uh, there is actually quite a lot of flights coming in through this area, relatively speaking. So as we start to look at non-traditional areas to fly to, like the Central America and the Caribbean and South America and Africa, basically this is a kind of a fairly cheap getaway through Mexico um, and Central America. Um, and then some of the um, problems with crime and poverty do show up in Central America as well as in South America. So you got to be careful where you fly to and plan those trips out accordingly. So basically most of the Southern Hemisphere, you need to plan that out a little bit more carefully in Africa and Latin America than you would if you're traveling to Europe or most other places in America or in Asia. So um, with the exception of maybe India um, being a little bit complicated to travel to as well. So let's look at that again. So on the population side, what I was trying to emphasize here is how much population there is. Basically, all that population that you expect along the West Coast is actually moved further south, is actually in Mexico, uh, Guatemala, Honduras, and um, Costa Rica, and all these areas along the south really have a lot of population. So there is quite a lot of population, and you can see down here in Java, there's the same thing going on. There is actually quite a lot of population on some of these islands. Um, so it's likely that in the future, there will be quite a lot of flights that you can get around, um, either here or also to Indonesia as well. You'll see that um, in a moment. So let's just look at that really quick. So you can kind of see there's a couple flight paths. So you kind of have this middle area here with Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, and also um, showing some things here for um, Jamaica. And then you have kind of a Cancun weird spot here. And then the rest of Central America kind of having similar prices, price tickets. So a lot of this is actually a little bit surprising. It's a little bit, it's almost $100 one way, $200 you should expect. And some of these places because if you get it you have to get this at least three weeks or four weeks in advance to get these kind of prices so you can't just book it the next week out otherwise you're talking about four times or even five times the price that we're looking at right here on most of these so south america is showing some interesting things basically brazil has its own kind of like sub area where it's actually very affordable to fly in brazil now if i would have known that i would have done that um, but I took a bus oftentimes in Brazil, but it is actually taking quite a long time on the bus just to get to Sao Paulo or for Rio and so on. Um, but nowadays the, the airports are pretty good except for on the West coast. So on the West coast, it's a little bit more expensive. You can see money, these tickets being $200 or even $400 for some of these weird airports. Um, and then let's go to Europe. So Europe is actually pretty complicated. Um, London kind of being the main cheap spot. Um, but there is some alternatives to London. Like you basically have Amsterdam and then down here in Greece. And then there's kind of this whole Italy area that has a similar price bracket. And you can see $22 to Malta. So you can get out to an island for pretty cheap there. So that's something to maybe look into. Um, there's quite a lot of really low cost uh, flights um, in here, hidden in here that you might want to look at. Um, but with the, some of the crime that you see uh, as you get basically also towards Spain as well as far Eastern Europe, um, it's not as safe as you might think um, out in Budapest and some other areas. So as you get to some of these other areas, you might want to watch out for that as well in Europe. Um, and then Africa is actually quite interesting. Um, I've been studying this for a while and trying to understand what's going on. Um, but basically, um, you know, there's basically this East Africa and then there's West Africa and then there's the South Africa. But then there's actually two parts of South Africa that you can fly to, which is along the coast here. Um, and then farther into South Af Africa, like proper South Africa, Johannesburg and Cape Town. Uh, and then Madagascar kind of being a side. And it actually is quite expensive. As you see, most of these flights are $400 or more. Um, and you can see um, some of that depends. Like if you're going to fly within South Africa, you can get $50 flights. But if you leave the country, 
and fly to one of these other countries, it can be actually quite a big price tag to get around Africa. So you should definitely be prepared just because you think it's cheap in Africa. It's actually very not cheap in Africa to fly around. So that's something to think about. Um, Southeast Asia is interesting. You really need to look at <clears throat> China and India as a whole separate thing. But I was really looking at the islands here, primarily traditional Southeast Asia, <clears throat> kind of flying out of Singapore and Kuala Lumpur. So most of those flights are going to be right in this region. And as you can see, <clears throat> there's kind of like this region here where they kind of go to and from India and Dubai. <clears throat> and then checking out the rest of Southeast Asia. So there are some different prices up here in Hong Kong, but you're going to get different prices for rentals if you also stay in Hong Kong as well. So you really have to look at <clears throat> the details about what you're doing <clears throat> in Southeast Asia because you can suddenly land in a pretty expensive city um, and get a cheap flight there, but then all of a sudden the hotel could be three times as much as the flight to get there so pretty interesting kind of discussion and then india is actually quite expensive overall um, once you're in india the flights are pretty cheap uh, throughout india um, but um, it is quite expensive just to get to india <clears throat> and as well as china does have come pricey areas so that pretty much covers most of the things let me just see if we got <clears throat> a couple questions on this uh, I'll just look at the question things here um, so no major questions on this um, but I would say definitely take a look at the population map um, you may want to look at the whole airport map you can kind of like pan around zoom in on this one and then add medium airports as well and then the medium airports will kind of add that I wouldn't go to small airports so much because you're not gonna have um, major flights uh, you can't really book it through Google or other major flight um, things if it's a small airport sometimes you need to call them directly <clears throat> and then the flight tracker um, definitely take a look at this um, to try to see uh, what's going on on the global flight map um, I looked at this um, at least a couple times a month just to see like what's going on overall <clears throat> and it can be very helpful and just as a reminder it's a good idea to make sure what the situation is in any country you're traveling to. It's regarding food and water. Um, sometimes there's not that you can drink directly from the water, tap water, or you have to be careful about what kind of food you're eating. Uh, I'm a vegetarian, but <clears throat> overall, this gives you a pretty good idea for what's going on globally <clears throat> in terms of flights. You can also add um, the airports in here, and if you zoom in, it will kind of give you some <clears throat> more details. Um, about what's going on but uh, definitely take a look at this i hope you really enjoyed this study let me know if you got any other questions i'll be glad to help you out thank you so much